What is happening guys, welcome back. So as you can see by the thumbnail and title of the video, we're doing some more modifications to the Mark 1 and a modification that I've wanted to do since buying the car at the very beginning and that is fitting air ride. So yeah, I'm gonna get a lot of people saying the car's low enough, you don't need to fit air ride to it. I wanna fit air ride to it. We were at Players Classic a couple of weeks ago and the car holds its own in the show field. It gets loads of attention, everyone loves it. It gets really well received. But for me, it was just lacking one thing. And it was sat there looking like an off-roader. It's just not low enough. It's not sitting how I want it to sit. Um, the BC Racing coilovers on the front are all the way down. And we've got massive arch gap. Still, in my eyes anyway, we've got massive arch gap. And I just don't like the way that it sits. The rear sits down pretty much about where I'd want it to sit. Uh, but I can't get the front... My hand on the camera. But I can't get the front any lower. So the only answer and the way to do it is going to be air ride. I've filmed this video about four times already trying to explain everything that we're doing with the air ride system and it's like 10 minutes long so what i'm going to do i'm going to put a separate video up which will be up here somewhere which will be a complete video of me going through and explaining the system and what we're going to be fitting into the car and how i'm using it because it is a sort of homemade system um i'll be a separate video to that so if you're interested in learning about the system and what's going into it and what i'm fitting go and watch that video but what we're going to do is just jump in. I've got to rip all the interior out of the car to be able to run um, all the airlines from the boot to the, to the front corners, to the rear. So the easiest thing to do is just take all the interior out and wire it in and all that. So anyway, right, let's get on with ripping the interior out of the car. Right guys, apologies I've not filmed as much as I thought I was going to, but sit rep on what we've done so far. So I've got everything mounted and bolted down into, temporarily, into the uh, spare wheel tub, if you like. Everything is wired up, relay is down there, main fuse in is there, battery power is all in, um, everything is wired up. We've got to go back and heat shrink in, tidy everything up and clip things back and everything, but it's in. Uh, feed here runs around to the compressor, to the manifold from the tank, and I've also done and joined all of the wires together for the controller, and we've spliced an ignition watt live for the controller off of the main ignition live for the relay, which we've gone down actually to the fuse board, and on the right hand side of the fuse board here, this one, these blades here sticking up are ignition live, which is nice. These ones are permanent live, there's a few this side. These ones are ignition live, so we've done that. Now, I haven't put an inline fuse in this yet because I haven't got any blade fuses. I've just done this just to make sure everything works. I've got to order a couple, I'll go and pick a few bits up tomorrow to sort this out properly and get it working safely. But it's in, everything's sort of wired in. Um, Schrader valve here for bleeding the tank is in just to close the system off. And technically, if we now start the car, there's a compressor start the car so that we don't kill this battery so there we go the compressor is filling up the tank which is then putting air into the manifold now i've got the buttons the wrong way around so down is up and up is down but and for some reason this middle one's not working it's opening solenoid but it's not doing what i want to do so we'll have to readdress that but all of them work and then that would open the exhaust solenoid to let them down. So that is a pretty good start. I'm pretty happy with what we've put in so far and what we've wired in. Everything is okay. I just need to go through, tidy the wiring up. Um, we need to heat shrink and tape all these wires up. Um, clean all this out, take everything back out, carpet the box, and then we can remount all of the accoutrement in there. There we go. Box didn't trim the best, but manifold's in, everything's plugged in, plumbed in, tank is all in, um, compressor's all bolted in, we've got the relay down there, fuse down there, main power feed coming out this side. We've got the remote drain or the remote with the Schrader valve on it. 
that we're going to drill a hole in the side of the uh, spare wheel well that, that will then go through we've got what we got here? ignition feed earth the other earth and the control box all sorted out so we can go and drop this into the car now Good morning, so we gave up last night. It started getting a bit late and for some reason, it all completely fried my brain. Um, so we gave up, uh, went home, had a chill out and we're back this morning to hopefully try and get it finished. This is where we left it last night. We've got the other installation, if you like, for the boot in, done. We've got rear lines in, front lines in, rear line, front line, power cable here to the battery, put the earth in. We've got that plugged in, which goes down to the ignition line to power it all up. The next thing we need to work out then is where we're going to take the air line out through the wheel arch into the wheel arch. Yeah, where the wheel is. Let's get it on the lift, get it up, wheels off. We'll start assessing where they want to go and then we might get a strut off now and get a bag on so we can really gauge one front, one rear, and we can gauge exactly where they're going to go. When I was building the car, I got offered and bought the BC Racing Coilovers from VW Golf Mark One Club on Instagram. Um, and I bought them with the intention of wanting to convert them to air ride. So I put a post up on Instagram that I bought the BC Racing Coilovers and was thinking of doing this at some point. And then the guys at Only Charge Dubbed, Dubs or Bags, as their conversion kit is called, contacted me and said, we'd love to work with you. We'll do a bit of a deal on the kit. Um, let us know when you want them. A few months have gone by, contacted them, and within probably two days of contacting them, paying for them, the bags were here. So, what these are, are a bag that basically, you take the spring off the shock that is on the car, and you put the bag on with some seals in, um, put an airline, where the oil is, into it, pumps up there, and basically replaces the spring. Right, let's get it on. Yet again, welcome to a new day. So we nipped in for a few hours yesterday to try and get a few bits done. Um, nipped home for lunch and then proceeded to not do anything because I was absolutely knackered from last week. So we got in yesterday. We've got the bags on the struts this side, airlines all in on the front, and then the bags on the strut for the rear and the airlines all in. Um, all the airlines inside the car are now ran to the places that they need to go to. We've got a grommet coming through here to allow the airline through which has been Sikaflex in as well. Now I did all that so that I sort of had a bit of an idea of what I was doing, because I like to know what I'm talking about when I'm explaining how to do things. So we've got the struts off the car, and I'll be honest, I have already done the conversion on them. The video is gonna to get too long, I've put all this information in, so there's a separate video for the BC, only charge dubs BC Racing Air Ride conversion kit, which I'll put a link to up here. Um, here's a time lapse of me sort of doing all the conversion on them. Um, if you wanna know more about that, Watch the video that's linked above and in the description. Um, yeah, it was just gonna get a little bit too long. So, show you the time lapse. See you back in a minute. There we go, they are all done, sorted, and looking much better with a nice airbag on them instead of a, instead of a spring. Airbags are always better. So let's throw them on the car and get everything connected up, get all the gauges sorted out inside, and then we should be able to put power to it and see how this is gonna sit. And I'm very, very excited to see how it's gonna sit.
There we go then. Front struts and bags on. And same for the rear, they're on. So what we've got to do now is drill the holes for the airlines. Now, I've done one side so we could get a bit of an idea of where we're gonna go. So this one comes out here, there's a loop round to there. And the front one comes out just below where the brake line comes out and then curls up to the back of the strut. And I've had this with the jack up, down, wheel on, wheel turned. Nothing's gonna hit it, it isn't gonna catch anything. And I've checked the rear as well when you articulate it up and down. This isn't going to go rubbing on the chassis and the wheel is definitely not going to rub on it because it's not very wide. So we'll get these holes drilled, get the airlines pulled through, connect it up. And then in theory, put wheels on, chuck it on the floor, see if it looks any good. Well, that turned out to be rather a pain in the rear. Um, we got everything fitted, done on, um, bags went on like a dream not a problem at all with those they're on all the airlines are ran all the interior is now back in the car thrown all in we'll show you the gauges as well and the controller so here are the gauges you got this is the left side of the car orange is front i think white is rear right side of the car orange is front right is rear and boost gauge in the middle no they're not absolutely bang on and don't match that's a white light and they're a more yellow light and i just need to get some new bulbs here's the controller which should be left up and down, but it's not. It's, um, we've had to play around with the valve lock, which I'll explain in a minute. So these two are, for some reason, you press down to go up, which are both fronts. And then that one, you press down to go up, which is for both rears. And the reason being, we got everything in, done, fitted, absolutely fine. Started going around and playing with settings on the controller and airing, every, airing places or airing corners up. And for some reason, I think it was the driver's front corner, you would press up and it would air up to an extent, but it only gets 40 PSI and it was also exhausting at the same time. Um, so it wasn't just filling the bag up, it was actually coming out of the exhaust solenoid at the same time as well. So we took the valve block out about, genuinely took it out and stripped it about four times, changed um, solenoids over from areas, cleaned everywhere out, put it back together, took the um, um, like the electromagnetic, electronic side of it off, took all of the um, silicon sealant off of all the joints to make sure that no uh, solder was touching, which meant that both would be running at the same time. We've checked absolutely everything and we cannot find a, the problem with the valve block. We can't find why it's doing it and why it isn't working properly so what we've done for now to show you this as well there's the install it's all on the on the twist a little bit because we've just thrown it in there to because it was getting all stressy yesterday um but what we've done is this here is a bit of a bodge so this is a bit of airline that's folded over with a load of cable ties on it to stop the pressure coming out of this this is the the one that we've been having the problems with um there front left and right and this one here is now both rears which we have brought up here and we've put a t in here to just feed both of the rear bags from the one valve which is essentially the same way as running two-way management if you were just going to have two sort of paddle valves and you were just going to run the rear as one and the front as one which isn't the best because and i've just been out and driven this and the ride is 10 times better than it was on coilovers but if you start trying to give it a bit and lean into corners and things Obviously on the rear as the two bags are linked, as air, as you lean in and that one compresses and wants to compress the air, it pushes the air through the airline to the easier bag, which then essentially pushes that corner up, which wants to throw the car all over the place. And as you're sort of going through twisties, it really, really unsettles the car. And I highly would not recommend running two way on them. It's not the best at all, but it's fitted, it's in, it does work. It does go up and down. I'll pull it back and I'll, we'll air it out, show you what it looks like aired out. It looks pretty cool. So there's the air out, and I've got to say, it looks a thousand times better. The front still isn't down, 
enough quite where I want it to. We're going to have to try and do something with that. The rear is sitting pretty much where I want it to sit. It's tucking, tucking the wheel, but the front still leaving a little bit to be desired. But yeah, that is a massive, massive improvement. It makes life easier. Because I just nipped out in the car to just go and run a couple of little errands just to give it a little test out. Um, and yeah, came up to a speed bump, didn't air up for trying to see how low it was, hit the splitter and I broke the splitter yet again. Went and did what I needed to do to the industrial estate, turned around and came back, aired up by another, I think I put 40 extra PSI in the bag, rolling around at about 60 PSI ride height, which is a little bit high, but it just makes you a little bit more confident that you're not going to go hitting the exhaust on anything and punching the fuel tank again. Um, added another 40 PSI and it got it to 100 PSI. Over the speed bump like it wasn't even there. Absolutely amazing, phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. So massive, massive thank you to Bags by Only Charge Dubs for doing me an absolute storming deal on the bag conversion kit. Massive thank you to Elliot for giving me the compressor and a massive thank you to the guys at Lowdown Transporters for giving me the air tank. Oh, I'm so happy with it. So, so happy with it. We're pretty much ready now. Well, it's ready enough for gravity this weekend. Um, we're going to have to do something, either order a new valve block or do something else with the issue that we've got with it. But it's done for now. It's ready for the show. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one then, guys, and learned something. Maybe if you've got any questions about it, drop me a message on Instagram or something and I'll try and answer as many as I can. I'm no air ride guru, but I've done it a couple of times and I've... I've been watching this video that I've been editing. It's, I've not explained everything the best. So if you've got any questions, drop me a message. But yeah, until next time, guys, enjoy.